Hello and welcome to today's video where we're going to do a first example video with practicing proofs and these are going to focus on the most simple proof which is the direct proof. So like we talked about for direct proofs it's just if p then q. So all you do is you simply assume p is true and then, and then you do some math to try to arrive at the conclusion that q must also be true. So that's all we do. We assume the, the first part's true and then we try to show that the second part has to be true. So let's look at an example here. If n is odd, then n squared is odd. So obviously I need to assume n is odd. So that's what I write first. So assume n is odd, and I want to arrive at the conclusion that n squared must be odd. So how do I write an odd number in proofs? So n equals 2k plus 1. That's how we write odd numbers. So that's really important. You're going to see that a lot. Where k is an element of the z, because that's the integers. So k is an integer is what I mean by that. And that's true, right? All odd numbers, they have to be written as 2k plus 1, where k is some integer. That's just the definition of an odd number. So that's okay. Okay, so now I know, well, I'm trying to get to n squared. So what if I just actually square this 2k plus 1 I have right here? I should be able to do that. So n squared equals, well, 2k plus 1 squared. And let's see what that equals. Well, you'd have to FOIL that out. So I'll just write it here. So 2k plus 1 times 2k plus 1 that'll give me 4k squared plus 2k plus 2k plus 1 and I can simplify that I'll write it up here I'll get 4k squared plus 4k plus 1 and so far that doesn't really help me but I know that if I can somehow get this answer because this is the n squared part if I can get 4k squared plus 4k plus 1 to somehow equal 2k plus 1 then I'll be good to go. So how can I get it to look like that? Well, what if I work with this first part and factor out a 2, 2k actually. So let's do that. So I'm going to simplify this and turn it into 2k times, well actually just 2. I'm going to take out just a 2. I'm going to leave the k in there. So 2 times k squared plus 2k, right? Oh, it should be 2 times 2k squared plus 2k, if I can do the math. So 2k squared plus 2k all plus one and now this is looking good because I'm very close to this 2k plus one where k is an element of z well now that I have two times any number I can write this as like some number i and say okay well n squared equals 2i plus one where i equals i equals 2k squared plus 2k well, that's okay, because I know that that's also going to be an integer, and I know that this is um, this is the form for an odd number. Therefore, n squared is odd. And then to end my proof, I could write QED, but I just like to draw a little circle with the dot. I mean, little square with the filled in. So that's the end of the proof. So hopefully that makes sense. We went through all the steps there. And in the end, we were able to show that n squared is also going to be 2, two times some integer plus 1, which is what we want to do when we want to prove odd numbers. So, on to the next one. So, let a and b, a, b, and c be integers with a equals, does not equal 0 and b does not equal 0. Assume that a divides b, that's what this means, a divides that line you read as a divides b and b divides c. Okay, so now we want to prove that a divides c. Alright, well let's just take step by step. So, assume what we're given because we're doing a direct proof again so we assume whatever um, they tell us so a divides b and b divides c and now let's write out what this actually means what does a divides b mean so that means I can take b and divide by a and I would get some number or I could write that b equals a times that some number so b equals ax is how I'm gonna write it and c equals by right where an x and y would also have to be elements of integers because that's the definition of divisibility so that's something you just need to know when i say a divides b know that well b must be a times some number because that's just the definition of divisibility and that's going to get us started here and then what am i trying to prove i'm trying to prove that a divides c well if c equals b y and I know that b equals a times x, I can replace that so I can get c equals a times x times y. So well that equals c equals a times xy. 
well this is looking good right because now I have I'm trying to show that a divides C well I have that right here because I have a times some number XY and then I can say well what if I can just simplify this because I don't want two variables a times Z where Z equals that XY equals XY and then I have an XY would be an element of Z as well because I'm just multiplying two integers X and Y multiplying two integers is always going to be another integer so therefore that's the symbol for therefore the three little dots <clears throat> C A divides C because C equals A times Z so that's the definition that's the proof and I'm done again so again as you can see the direct proof we just go through we start with what we know we write it out we try to write out some mathematical way because again here this assumption a divides b and b divides c is not really mathematical so that's why we do that step and then we just kind of go go down the list and do, do whatever we can to get where we want to get to so now let's look at the last one and the last one will kind of show you that mathematical proofs can kind of be a little um, touchy and a little random you sometimes just have to be able to guess and check your work here so prove that every odd integer is a difference of two squares. Okay, so we're gonna let n be some odd integer. So let n be an odd integer. So if every odd integer is a difference of perfect squares, let me just show you what that's trying to prove. That's saying that for every x squared minus y squared, it's gonna equal some odd integer 2k plus one, because that's how we write odd integers. So that's something that we wanna get to in the end. So how can I do this? So let n be an odd integer. I'm going to say, well, n is always going to be 2k plus 1. So n equals 2k plus 1. That's the definition of odd. So definition of odd. That's why I can do that. And that's something they gave us. So now, well, let's say, what if um, I want to do the difference of two squares? What if my two squares were k squared and k plus 1 squared? And notice that I'm doing this because I'm trying to get it to where I can do one of the squares minus the other square to give me 2k plus 1. That's what I'm trying to get to. So I need to think of two squares <clears throat> that are going to be able to give me 2k plus 1. And I'm thinking, well, if I do k plus 1 squared and I subtract a k squared, that'll get rid of the k squared term and it might leave me with 2k plus 1. So let's see. Let's see what happens if I do that. So k plus 1 squared. And this is showing you that proofs are kind of random. It literally is a guess and check type of thing. A lot of people think that you can't do guess and check within math, but you definitely can, especially when it comes to proof. As long as you can give some reasons as to why you do it and why it's okay to do it, you're good to go with doing that. And we're showing that we're doing it because we want to show that no, no matter what I do, if I do k plus 1 squared minus k squared, I'm going to get 2k plus 1 because that would do this proof. That would show that every odd integer is a difference of two squares because k can be any integer. So that's that's why this would work. So k plus 1 squared, that's foiling again. You're going to get k squared plus 2k plus 1. Okay. And then now obviously k squared. So what if I now actually subtract them? So what if I let this equal my x squared in the example and let k squared equal y squared and now if I do x squared minus y squared, I will get k squared plus 2k plus 1 minus k squared. And that equals 2k plus 1, right? And that's what I wanted to prove all along. So I've shown that no matter what my n is, n was just an odd integer. It was 2k plus 1. I can No matter what that is, I can always get it to where it's the difference of perfect squares if I just let the first square be that k plus 1 squared and my second square would just be k squared. So therefore, if we can express n as the difference, therefore, if n is odd, if n is odd, we can express it, express n as the difference of perfect squares. And that's what we just showed here. And that shows you that proofs can be a little tough sometimes um, of perfect squares. And you've got to be creative. You've got to really think about what you're trying to get to and um, kind of guess and check till you get there. But you can see here, this one would be pretty obvious, even if you didn't know the answer, to think of which ones would need to be uh, k plus 1 squared and k squared because you're obviously just trying to get to 2k plus 1. So not too difficult, but a little harder than the first two. Hopefully this provides a good introduction to proofs, getting you some examples, kind of getting used to seeing the terminology, the symbols, and all that stuff. 
Um, and we'll get into more examples later on. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.